Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and start presenting. Go ahead and start presenting and uh, yeah, okay, so uh, welcome, welcome to this uh, third part of three of this series in which we've been talking about keys for proper nutrition. Today's episode and the last one of this series is called flexible, flexible eating. And I want to sort of recap what we've seen in the previous uh, episodes. On the first episode, we talked about the three pillars of proper nutrition. And the three pillars were, excuse me, the meal distribution to have in between four to five meals throughout the day uh, to keep the muscles fed and keep the metabolism high. Uh, the second pillar uh, was uh, also distributing the macronutrients throughout your meals, your different meals. And pillar number three was hydration. Obviously, we included as well exercise and rest as a, a perfect complementation of, of that uh, proper nutrition, right? It's really going to help you perform better uh, on the long run. And, and we talked uh, several master classes about the importance of uh, not having uh, high levels of stress. Okay, so then on episode one, we talked a little bit um, about, oh, I'm blanking. What did we talk about? And yes, we talked about qualitative versus quantitative um, nutrition, right? And so we, we sort of uh, mentioned, we went deeper into the qualitative. And the qualitative simply means that you change or improve the quality of what you eat. You start introducing more whole foods. Uh, you start introducing real food instead of processed food. And then just by doing that and, and having the meals that we talked about in the first episode, by doing that, you start seeing results and, and keep it hydrated and all that. Um, but today we're going to go on the other side of the spectrum. We're going to go into the quantitative. We go into to the quantitative when we go into numbers, when we go into details, okay? And that's what we're going to be exploring. But flexible eating is sort of... Uh, a combination of both because it has the intuitive approach but the numeric and scientific as well so let's dive right in to what is flexible eating so uh, flexible eating is basically having some targets uh, regarding calories regarding macros and then just you need to hit those targets and the way you do it, the way you get to your target, it's really up to you. That's why it's flexible. You can eat whatever is of your liking. And as long as you hit those numbers, then you're good. You, you are following the flexible eating protocol. Okay. So uh, this is um, very well known, especially in the world of CrossFit. Um, you know, uh, practitioners of CrossFit, normally they have their macro targets their calorie targets, and then the way they get there, it's up to them, you know? So they get good at making the right food combination to get there. So obviously there are pros and cons to using this approach. Some of the benefits is that it's easy to follow. Uh, first, because it's food that is of your liking. And that, you know, you very soon you get the hang out of it because we're people of habit. And as soon as you find things that you like and that they're hitting your goals, uh, your targets, then it's just a matter of creating the habit and then you keep uh, following and then you keep having results over and over again. So in that regard, it's easy to follow, you know, it's not like you are giving a prescribed diet and then you have to follow it by the T. No, you sort of create your own diet. You create your meal plan according to your liking, according to what you're used to it. Uh, and then once you tweak the food enough that it hits your goal, that's it. That's it. You, you have it. You put it in autopilot. It is sustainable because, again, it's going to be things that you are used to eat, that you like eating, and most likely will continue to eat. 
So then it becomes a model that is easily uh, repeatable and replicable. So then it's very sustainable, as a matter of fact. The, there are no food off limits. You really can include anything you want or you like, as long as, once again, you're hitting your targets. So uh, if you want to eat a burger and the burger is going to go ahead and, and hit your goals and not exceed them, then by all means, have the burger. Uh, I think that uh, something like that is really going to um, bring some unbalance to your daily goals, especially if you're in weight loss. But once again, there's really no off limits things, right? Uh, it's just that the processed foods uh, are going to tend to occupy a lot because they are calorie dense. So the other thing is that it gives you freedom of choice. You really can choose the foods that you like uh, and that you enjoy eating. So that makes it very individualized and very, uh, very much suitable for you. And you can adjust specific macronutrient needs. For example, let's say that you're doing hypertrophy, you're really building muscles, and you want to emphasize protein. So if you want to increase your protein uh, percentage, you can do that because you're in control of, of uh, the percentage you're going to eat. Nobody's going to tell you what you need to do or what you have to do. You sort of can control, right? Um, me or, you know, science in general can recommend you what are the healthy percentages of macronutrients, uh, but ultimately you're going to be the one tweaking and determining. Um, and there are many, uh, you know, um, dietary plans that already follow sort of out of the recommendation uh, percentages. For example, keto, it's completely out of the recommendations that science gives as far as the the fat percentage, it's its way higher than it should be, yet there are people that get result out of that. So I personally don't recommend that, but uh, you can tweak your percentages of macronutrients. Uh, the downsides, the first one is that the structure might be too loose for some people. And let me give you an example. When I was doing practicing CrossFit myself and I asked for help in my uh, nutrition, this was the approach that everybody followed. So the coach gave me my target. He gave me my numbers of macronutrients and told me, there, you, you need to hit this target. And I was like, okay, and how do I do that? So it's just, you know, it's, it's flexible. You eat whatever you want and then you try to get it. And if you don't get it, then next, next day you, you will get closer to it. I was like, okay, well... At that time, I didn't really understood. Uh, I didn't. I didn't know at the time how to differentiate between carbs and fats, and I didn't know that, for example, avocado had fat. I didn't know that nuts had fat. I, I just. I, I wasn't so knowledgeable, so he assumed that I was, and so you really have to know your game if you're doing this. You really need to know what food you know, groups are, uh, you, you have to have an idea of the calories that we're talking about. And so uh, registering this is going to be very important. The other downside is that there's no real emphasis on micronutrients. And so what I mean by that is because there's no off limit food, you can use anything. Uh, nobody's really recommending you the amount of veggies or fruits is, is as long as you get to your, your targets, that's it, that you're good, right? Well, the danger of that is that you're missing on a lot of micronutrients, vitamins, minerals um, that are so essential for our body. Uh, and if you uh, get into a flexible eating uh, habit, I highly encourage you to take uh, multivitamin supplements just in case you're missing out on essential minerals and, and vitamins. And the other downside is that you do need to track every single meal, uh, right? Especially if you use my fitness pal. Uh, my fitness pal is fantastic for that. I really recommend you or encourage you to have the premium um, membership in which they will give you also the breakdown of the macros. 
And when you enter that, you're really going to get feedback of how you're doing day by day, meal by meal. Um, so for people that are getting started, it might be a bit overwhelming. For those that are a bit more ambitious or are losing the last few pounds, it's a really great exercise to get to know by, you know, with precision what it is that you're consuming on a daily basis. So here we go. All right, now we know what flexible um, eating is. We're going to go ahead and set up the, the process of how do we get started in losing weight, gaining weight, doing body recomposition, whatever it is that we want to do. We need to start with these seven steps uh, to make real progress. The first one is to set a goal, right? And there are several angles that we need to look at a goal. We're going to talk about how to successfully set your goal. Then we're going to determine the total energy requirements uh, adjusted to the goal, right? So if we want to lose weight, we need to know what is the total daily energy uh, expenditure. With that, we need to create a deficit uh, and then we need to decide at what pace we're going to be losing the weight and, and so on and so forth. I apologize, guys. So, okay. The other thing that we need to know is um, then we need to set the protein uh, target. And then we start with the macronutrients, uh, protein target, then the fat uh, target, and then the carbohydrate target. Um, then we sort of individualize and convert these numbers into food. And then we create the habits, as I, as I was telling you, once you know what works, let's say for, for your snack, when you have a snack that hits all the targets, then it's easiest for you to create a habit of eating that snack uh, because you know as long as you're eating that, you're gonna be within your range of, uh, of success. You're gonna be hitting your target, right? The same for breakfast. If, for example, uh, having a protein shake is really gonna help you hitting your macro targets and your calorie targets, then by all means have the same every single day as long as you're really pushing toward getting your to your goal and then you need to monitor and you need to evaluate and you need to adjust why because yes this is science but in the end everything that we're doing here is an estimation of how many calories you should be consuming and this is an estimation of what is your uh, deficit caloric deficit but until you actually don't get to eat the food and then weigh yourself after a week or two weeks, then we really don't know if, if that hypothesis is a reality, right? So if, if you've done your calculations and then one week pass by and you don't lose weight, two weeks pass, pass by and you don't lose weight, then we need to adjust our hypothesis and tweak those numbers, okay? All right, so let's talk about goal setting first. There is a general uh, goal setting. And in the world of fitness, there are four um, normal uh, goals. Weight loss or fat loss, weight gain or muscle gain, both meaning fat and gain, I mean, losing fat and gaining muscle. And that's what's called as um, body recomposition body recomposition excuse me so this is a very uh, specific population that is actually able to do that normally you need to choose one or the other i mean you cannot be in a caloric deficit and a caloric surplus sur surplus at the same time you know what i mean so you either eat more than your caloric needs or you eat less but with people that have not trained in a long time or they're new into training, both things can happen at the same time. They can be losing fat and at the same time building muscle, okay? So this is what's called body recomposition. And then the, the fourth general goal, goal is improve perform, sport performance, right? And then there are a number of other unprecise uh, goals such as saying, I want to feel better, I want to have more energy, I want to look good, right? Um, so it's just a generic goal. But then we need to be specific. We need to go from the general goal to the specific goal, right? 
And in order to go more specifically, let's say that somebody say, I want to look good. Okay, so to look good, how many pounds do you need to lose, for example, right? And we need to get into the specific. And that's when it's helpful to know what it is, what should it be our ideal weight, okay? So hang on with me. I'm going to show you the, the formula, how to cal calculate your ideal weight. Um, you don't necessarily have to mortify yourself if you're far away from this number right now. Uh, and it doesn't mean that it applies to everybody. This is just a formula. This is just, just a calculation, but it's a reference. And if you take that reference, let's say that you are at 190 and it just so happened that your uh, ideal weight is in the 165 or something like that, then there is a huge gap between one and the other. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and start with a reasonable goal. Let's say your goal could be uh, losing 15 pounds or losing, you know, so we're going to sort of determine a realistic goal based on where you should be according to this formula. And the formula is as follows. To calculate the ideal weight of a woman, we're going to take the five first feet uh, of height and those are going to be 100 pounds. And every inch after is going to be another five pounds. So for example, uh, a woman that is five feet three inches, uh, it would be a hundred pounds plus three inches times five. So that means that it would be a hundred plus fifteen. The ideal weight of that person of that lady uh, would be a hundred and fifteen pounds. So once again, this is just a reference. Okay. So if you want, you can do that right now uh, if you're a lady. Uh, if you're a man, however, then uh, the first five feet are going to be 106 pounds. And then every inch after that is going to be six pounds. Okay, so uh, a man that is five feet 10 inches, it will be 106 plus 10 times six. So that means 106 plus 60 that idea the ideal weight of a person of a man of 5 feet 10 is 166 pounds okay so if you want you can go ahead and calculate now yourself your ideal weight okay um, and once again I, I want to emphasize that if you want to make the most out of this master class I, I really encourage you to have your calculator uh, on hand and that you are able to actually crunch these numbers with us so, okay, let's go. Um, what is a safe and realistic weight loss goal? That's a great question. So a safe and well-researched goal is to lose half a pound, uh, I'm sorry, half to 1% of the total body weight per week, okay? Half to 1% of total body weight per week. So for example, if, if my weight is, let's say, 180, um, then 1.8 would be at a higher end of the 1%, right? Uh, and then 0 0.6 would be at the lower end, something like that. So, so more or less 1 to 2 pounds or 0 0.4 to 0 0.9 kilograms per week. That's sort of a safe uh, goal to lose weight, okay? All right, so one piece of information that is going to be very important is that 3,500 3, calories equals one pound. We need to know that, okay? Very important. All right, so that is to achieve by creating a caloric deficit below of our daily energy expenditure, okay? Um, so we need to burn 3,500 uh, 3, calories in order to lose one pound, if that makes sense. So, okay, uh, a mild weight loss, it's considered be, you know, losing half a pound per week, and that would be a deficit of 250 calories. Moderate, moderate well, weight loss would be losing one pound a week, and that would be a deficit of 500 calories. Weight loss is considered 1.5 pounds, so that is a deficit of 750 calories. 
And then fast or rapid weight loss is losing two pounds weekly, and that's a deficit of a thousand calories. Does that, does this make sense? Okay, so with that in mind, uh, it's very easy to project in time how long is it gonna take us to lose the weight that we want to lose, okay? So I'm having, I'm getting the calculator ready myself. So decide how many pounds you want to lose according to your ideal weight. Like let's say that, that man that was 190 and he realizes that 166 is uh, his ideal weight. So he decides, okay, I'm gonna go for 170. So I have 20 pounds to lose. Okay, that's a good goal, right? Um, so let's say, let's say that you have 30 pounds. Okay, let's say that man thinks, okay, from 190, I'm gonna go to 160. Okay, 30 pounds that he wants to lose. Let's see what is a realistic time that he needs. All right, so let's create several scenarios. Scenario number one is losing one weekly pound, right? So that would be uh, 30 weeks or seven point uh, or seven and a half months, okay? Why? What we did is uh, just one, one pound, I mean 30 pounds, one per week, that's 30 weeks, okay? Scenario two, that would be losing a pound and a half weekly, okay? And that would take him 20 weeks or five months to get to his goal. Scenario three, uh, a little bit more aggressive weight loss would be losing two weekly pounds and that would take him 15 weeks or three months and three weeks, okay? So that's sort of how you can project your goal. So now you have a very specific goal. I wanna lose 30 pounds in three months and a half, for example, right? So now you have the, the time, you have the pace, you have the amount of weight that you want to lose, and that is a specific uh, goal, okay? So you have the generic, I want to lose weight or fat, and then you have the specific. So setting deficit uh, for fat loss, you can see here, uh, our, we already established that to lose one pound, you need to uh, burn an extra 3,500 uh, calories. So another example, let's say a woman that is 200 pounds wants to lose 50 pounds, right? So that's, that's a, a lot of weight. Um, so for you to look at it, 50 pounds that she needs to lose, multiply the 3,500 that represents one pound, that is 175,000 calories that that person needs to lose over the course of some time. So if that person says, okay, I'm gonna create a logical time frame. I want to lose 50 pounds in 60 days, meaning in two months. Well, the caloric deficit is close to 3,000 uh, daily calories a day. That's, that's impossible. You cannot create a deficit that large as almost 3,000 calories then the person says okay so i'm going to try to do it in six months all right so with six months that person needs to have a daily calorie deficit of almost 1000 calories is it impossible it's not impossible but it's quite aggressive right and that person has to be very disciplined to day in and day out lose or have a deficit of almost a thousand calories and it will take him half a year but if that person says, okay, I'm gonna give myself the entire year to do it, uh, that is fine. That is fine because now the deficit is, is a bit more, you know, it's milder. We're talking about 500 calories per day, right? So there is room for error there. Like one day, maybe you don't hit the target. One day you have a, a free day. Okay, well, that's fine. You can still make it, uh, but it's gonna be longer. We're talking about a year. So I have here a chart of how it would be, like for this loss of 500, that would be the green line. You know, it would take that person almost a year to complete the transformation. Um, but, you know, for these fast uh, routes, what happened is the following. If, if the person can adhere to the fast loss uh, weight, you know, the fast weight loss pace, then what happened is that the results 
sort of compound very quickly and the person start getting resolved faster and faster and faster. Why? Because the person, the, the more weight they lose, uh, the more energetic they feel, the more they can train, the more they can burn, the more. So it sort of compounds by itself and it accelerates the momentum of the results. I hope that makes sense. All right, so let's understand the numbers behind nutrition. Now get your calculators ready because uh, we're going to do some numbers here. The first term and number that you need to know is the basal metabolic rate. And the basal, basal metabolic rate basically is the energy that your body needs uh, if you are in coma. Like if you wake up one day and are laying on the bed all day long, that's the energy that your body needs to just do the blood flow, just to keep you alive, to breathe, to all that. That's your basic metabolic rate. How do you calculate that? This is an estimate, okay? There are formulas, are too complicated. This is just a simplistic way. And the simple way is to get your weight in pound times 10. And that is your basal metabolic rate. For example, my weight currently is 164 times five, that is 1600 and something. So that would be by my basal metabolic rate. Go ahead and calculate yours. I know it's, it's easy. If you are right now at 150, then it would be 1500. If you are at 120, then it would be 1200. Uh, okay, and so on and so forth. All right, so now we need to establish what is your total daily energy expenditure, or also known as TDEE. And your TDEE basically means the activity that your body do when you are in coma, as we talked about, plus the intentional movement or sport that you do, and the movement you do when you go to work, when you do groceries, when you are in and about doing things, okay? So all that together, uh, that is your total daily energy expenditure. So how do you calculate that? So very easy. You're gonna take that number, remember? So for me, the number was 1600. That is my basal metabolic rate. You take ba the basal metabolic rate times 1.2 if you are a sedentary person that do not exercise and has an office or a desk job. Um, so that would be your TDEE. If you are a person that has some activity, let's say that you exercise once or twice a week and you have a fairly sedentary job mostly, then you would, you would multiply 1.3. If your activity is moderate, let's say that uh, you are a teacher, you're, you walk throughout the day, uh, and then in addition you train intentionally between three to five times a week, then you are in the moderate. So you're gonna multiply your basic metabolic rate uh, times 1.4, okay? If you, are, if you have a job that you are standing most of the time, you're lifting things, you're carrying uh, heavy objects, plus you uh, exercise quite frequently throughout the week, then you time your BMR uh, times 1.5, okay? Um, and finally, uh, if you're very active, meaning you have a very demanding physical job, and in addition to that, you train sometimes between six to eight times a week, then that would be your formula, okay? So go ahead and calculate that. So I'm gonna do it for myself. We said that for me, it was 166 times 10. Uh, this is my basic metabolic rate. Then I'm gonna say times 1.4. For me, it's moderate, moderate. So that's gonna be 2,300. So it's 2,324, okay? So that would be my number. Um, that is my total uh, daily energy expenditure. All right, so now that we have that, uh, we need to create the deficit. If, if you want to lose weight, you need to create the deficit, okay? So remember, you're going you're gonna to subtract 250 calories if you want to lose half a pound. You're going to subtract 500 calories if you want to lose one pound. 700 and, uh, 750 calories if you want to lose one and a half pound 
and a thousand calories if you want to lose two pounds okay does that make sense all right so i'm gonna let you calculate the numbers so you can get to your uh first you get to your basic basic uh, basal metabolic rate you get to your tdee and then you get to your caloric deficit okay so my recommendation is always between the one pound to the one pound and a half these are numbers that are realistic are achievable and once you start seeing results then you will get encouraged to keep going all right so i'm going to move on all right so now it's time now that we have that number in my case this is my number uh you we're going to do the breakdown of the uh, macros right first in calories and then second in grams so how do we do that well first we need to choose the percentage of the macros right we need to choose that i want to say that the standard what most people use is the 40 30 30. so 44 carbs 34 protein and 34 fat okay i'm going to give you the general recommendation the general recommendation is carbs should be between 40 to even uh, 50 or 60 percent okay for people that do a lot of cardio uh, protein is normally between 10 percent at the lowest to 35 at the highest at the high end and fat is somewhere between 20 the minimum to 35 the maximum okay so let's just say that you go with the 40 30 30. so how do how do we break it down so what we do is we first multiply the total number of calories including the deficit right so remember this was my total daily energy expenditure right so i'm going to subtract uh to lose one pound and to lose one pound it was minus 500 so minus 500 that's this is my number 1800 this is with the deficit okay so this is my number with the deficit included uh, so if i want to calculate the calories coming from carbs what i do is i multiply by 0 0.40 so for example 1800 times 0.40 okay so in this case 720 9.6 that's the calories coming from carbs but I, i'm gonna show you here the example well in the example i rounded it up 1800 times 0 0.40 equal 720 calories from carbs okay so in the same example 1800 times third point 0.30 equals 540 calories for proteins and fat okay did you get that all right, so go ahead and calculate your calories from the macros. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to calculate the grams. But before doing that, I'm going to share with you facts about the grams before the calculation. And these are the facts. One gram of carbs equal four calories. One gram of protein equal four calories one gram of fat equal nine calories so fat are almost uh, more than double the calories of uh, protein and carbs so okay so divide the calories from the carbs by four okay so for example for example let's say the calories of the carbs is 720 divided by four that's 180 calories coming from, I mean, 180 grams coming from carbs. Now, divide the calories from protein by four. So, okay, the calories from protein are 540 divided by four. That's 135 grams of protein. Okay, and now divide the calories from fat by nine. So, the calories of fat are 540 divided by nine that's 60 grams of uh, fat did you get that so that's how you calculate your macros first you calculate the calories and then from the calories you calculate the grams 
already. So here we go, we're gonna do now the, the interesting thing, okay? So with the same example, the 1800 uh, total calories with the deficit included, we're gonna create our meal chart, uh, our meal target chart. So we already established that, oops, we already established that we're gonna need um, 100 and, uh, 720 uh, calories for carbs, 540 and 540, okay. So we're gonna break it down in the five meals that I recommended, um, so we need to divide now. First, we go to the general calories, um, 1800, and what you do is you multiply, I mean, you divide 180, uh, 1,800, you divide that by four, 450. So those are gonna be your main meals. So meal number one is gonna consist on 450 calories. Meal number three, your lunch, is gonna be 450. And meal, meal number five, your dinner, is going to be 450. Now you get that 450 and you divide it by two, and voila, you create your snacks. Now your snacks are at 225. 225 and then 225. Get it? Okay. So these are your target as far as calories. All right? So let's do the calories from carbs. Okay, so the total calories from carbs is 720, right? So 720 divided by four main meals, 180. So in your breakfast, you're gonna have 180 calories. In your lunch, 180 calories. And at dinner, 180 calories. And then you're going to divide that by two and you got 90. So your snack, you're gonna have 90 your other snack you're gonna have 90. Make sense? We're calculating now the calories, okay? Let's do the same with the protein. So we have 540, 540 from calories from protein. We're gonna divide by four, that's 135. So you're gonna have 135 calories coming from protein in your breakfast, at lunch, and at dinner, right? Okay, the same is going to be for fat. 135, 135 for lunch, 135 for dinner, okay? And then let's go ahead and divide by two and 67.5, let's say 68, is gonna be your calories for the snacks, 68. Are you following? Okay, 68, cool. Now, let's go ahead and calculate the grams, shall we? So, what we do for the grams, you see here, we're gonna have a total of 180 grams of carbs, right? So 180, 180 from carbs, you're gonna divide by four, and that's gonna be 45. So you're gonna have 45 grams in your main meals, 45 grams, in your main meals, okay? All right, let's do this, let's now divide by two, and then we have 22 and a half grams in your snacks. 22, let's say 23 in your snacks. Okay, all right, so let's go to the protein. We have 135, divided by four, that's 33. Okay, let's say 33. You're gonna have 33 grams of protein in your three main meals. Divide that by two, and we're gonna have 17 grams of protein on your snacks. Make sense? All right, let's do the same with the fat. We have 60 grams divided by four, 
That's 15 in your main meals. So that means 15 grams of fat in your breakfast, 15 grams of fat in your lunch, 15 grams of fat in your at dinner. We're gonna divide that by two, 7.5. So let's say eight. Eight grams of fat in your snack, number one. Eight grams of fat in your snack, number two. So there you go, you just created uh, the chart with your targets. So what you do is when you use um, when you use my fitness pal, you're going to look meal by meal and you're going to know if you hit your targets. So this is very useful because, for example, let's say you're looking for a protein bar and you don't know if that protein bar is good for you, right? So the other one I was looking protein bars and then I, re I noticed that it was 220 calories. It had like 24 grams of carbs. It had, I think, 18 grams of protein and it had something like seven grams of fat. And I look at this in meal number two and it was right on target. And I was like, whoa, this protein bar is right on target. It's perfect for me and for my goals. So I've been having that protein, pow uh, protein bar uh, for, for my morning snack almost every day, okay? Because it works for my goals. Does it make sense? So then you can recreate this chart to your caloric needs and to your goals. That's what flexible eating is all about, okay? Do you understand? So, all right, so um, now I'm gonna close it up here because this is enough numbers. Just to announce that I'm going to start um, next week hurricane season. And the hurricane season is the newest and latest fitness program that I've designed. Uh, and it consists on six weeks of uh, training of workouts four workouts every week you'll be working out four times plus a recommended amount of cardio that you can do on the side um, we're going to base these workouts on the muscle confusion confusion principle and what it means is that every training session is different to from another so it's it's really going to challenge your muscles uh, to adjust to new challenges so that's what it's based uh, on then we're going to be using the nutrition roadmap to success and we are going to base our uh, approach to nutrition with this flexible eating meaning you're going to get your numbers you're going to get your targets and then you're going to learn how to hit them every time eating whatever you like to eat most okay um, and then even though you're going to eat whatever you eat sort of your liking, you're still going to get like a sample of a meal plan. So you sort of have an idea of how to structure your meals. So you're getting closer and closer to your to your targets. Um, also, you will have the community of hurricane fighters to encourage each other for motivation and support. Uh, and we will have weekly group calls where there will be Q&A and where I will be explaining things about nutrition uh, to help us reach our goals. And uh, that's it. That's really everything that I have for today. This is also the, the end of the series. I hope you got uh, something out of this. Um, and really, if you want to make the most out of all this information that I, that I share with you, I really, really encourage you to try it out, to try the seven weeks uh, and see for yourself. Because one thing is to know and another thing is to actually do and to do them, right? Um, so, yeah, hopefully you will join. Please let me know if you're interested. Uh, I hope you also enjoy this, this uh, master class. And let me know if there's uh, other topics that you would like to cover in future uh, master classes. So thank you again for your attention, for your company, for your patience and uh, to your health. Take care.